I worry a lot. If you're anything like me, you worry a lot about the future, what you're gonna eat tomorrow, and just every which possible way situation could go wrong, you worry about. And you just imagine the worst case scenario happening all the time in any scenario you're in. I think I worry a lot because I'm afraid of being out of control. Being out of control feels like drowning in a sea of being overwhelmed and fear. You're sinking in overwhelming terror, okay? This shit's, this shit's dark. So what do you do when you're in these moments of out of control? How can we be more comfortable with being uncomfortable? Hey guys, welcome back to Building X8. I'm here with another episode to share all the failures that happened at X8 Media this week. There was a lot. Fuck! There's always a way, Gabe. I think the first thing you can do to be better with being out of control is letting go. I could literally be on an island, but my mind is somewhere else randomly in the US which my clients are freaking out about and I just can't stop thinking about work. And we just wanna make sure that um, that that's confirmed. Well, that was me on this trip to Ibiza. I went to Ibiza, Spain to meet my team for the first time, have a great team bonding trip, and also check out Spain for its beautiful islands. Hey Jade, I just wanted to let you know that the client hasn't paid X8 out yet but we will stand by on updates soon. Right before my trip to Ibiza, basically one of the biggest client projects at X8, whale number three, did not pay us on time. And this is huge because it was literally half our quarterly revenue, which is like an important amount. And basically when you run a media agency, whenever you finish a brand campaign, say you make a piece of content for them, right? With another influencer or you're managing that contract, the brand doesn't just pay you immediately. It is not just an instantaneous, here you go, here's your money, thank you, no. Okay, so say you finish a project in April 1st. Depending on your contract, the brand is allowed to pay you net 30 to net 45 days after the project's done. Our specific project took 45 days, but that's business days, not regular days. So you don't get paid in May 15th, you get paid May 31st because of the weekends and the holidays, right? So now you're basically looking at two months later after you finish your project, you get paid. Oh, no, no, no. You know, in this case, we did not get the vendor form in time from the, the client. So that put us an additional two weeks to get paid out because you need a vendor form to complete the authorization of the payment. So yeah, you get paid maybe June 15th. Nope, if the brand finally wants to pay through check, I know you'd be surprised some brands want to pay through check, that's gonna give you additional time for time in the mailing, time for you to check it into your bank account. So you're basically looking at June 21st for it to finally arrive for a project you did in April. That's what's giving me a lot of stress. And on top of this, if you're someone like me running a company that has to pay freelancers, contractors, and other people that are in the organization, no one gives a fuck about that. So you just have to keep managing even though the brand is late to pay you. You have to still pay out people. I don't think I slept very well last week. I don't think I slept at all that week. I was just so worried about like when the money was gonna arrive. And finally, last week on I believe Tuesday, it arrived. <laughs> we just got paid! Finally! And the weirdest thing of all is I didn't do shit. Like I didn't have to track on the payment. I didn't have to, you know, send all these reminders. It just came. I think next time if I work to face this again, which I probably will, I would just learn to accept the situation. If I can't do anything about the situation, if I really did my best, I need to be able to accept where we are at and really get better credit lines. <laughs> So the second story I have about being out of control is the idea of it's better this way. When you think about a situation that went horribly wrong, but you kind of tell yourself a narrative of like, it was meant to be this way, or it actually ended up being better this way. I definitely think it helps us kind of deal with those feelings in the moment. So this is a story that perfectly captures this statement. This story takes place in Ibiza. So I met Amanda, my editor, and Becky, my assistant, for the first time. We've been calling on Zoom for a long time, so I really was like, super excited to meet them. And one of our team bonding activities was cliff jumping. I know we do some freaky shit at X8, but um, no joke, we just wanted to like swim, but we just saw these locals jumping off 40, 50 feet cliffs and we're like, we should do the same. <laughs> but I was terrified. I was thinking about, oh my God, like what if I fucking die, hit my head on the rocks? What if I miss and I just like, just slip and fall and not jump in the water. So me and Amanda decide to just start off slow and wade in the water. We're just like playing around in the shallower area. So the way that this location worked is the big drop off where you can jump off the cliff and land in the water has deep water. Where me and Amanda were playing in the shallower water. But what was happening was because there was a lot of waves going crashing into the rocks, there was a lot of stuff that came with it. There was seaweed, there were fishes, but there were also jellyfish. 
Literally, we weren't in the water very long. Five minutes later, Amanda got bit by a jellyfish and immediately she was in pain and we got her out of the water. And I'm just like, oh my God, what is going on? And obviously I was super scared for her. So it ended up being fine. Like she just had this giant like scar from like the jellyfish sting, but she was alive. And we decided to go home that day and not jump off cliffs because we already got nervous that, that there were more jellyfish in the water. All of us were pretty bummed out not being able to jump off cliffs, but we obviously knew Amanda's safety was more important. Later that night, Amanda Amanda was kind of saying how, you know, maybe it was better that we didn't jump off the cliffs because we could have gotten killed by maybe slipping off the rock and hitting our head somehow, right? Like maybe, hypothetically speaking, the jellyfish getting stung, right? That small little injury prevented us from having a larger injury that may have happened if we didn't have that small incident happen. As dumb as it is, I'm really happy that our team bonding cliff jumping activity didn't go as planned because we ended up being home safe and not risking our lives out there. I know you could kind of go on a tangent with these excuses of like, but maybe this is better this way, but I think it's harmless. And honestly, if you're going through a rough time and you can't see the meaning of something, create it for yourself. Maybe, you know, if you didn't get the scholarship you wanted, maybe you would have been more depressed because you went to a school that maybe was more isolating, right? Maybe if you didn't get that job, it allowed you to start a business and kind of go on your own independent journey. It's dumb, but like we should make our own narratives to help us feel better about situations because life is meaningless on its own and we have to be the ones that add the meaning onto it. So if you're out of control, it might be helpful in the moment to come up with a, it was better this way narrative and fill in the blank for yourself. Anyways, although it was shitty that Amanda got injured, I actually ended up getting stung by jellyfish too. These are some photos. The visa trip was memorable, not because of the fancy locations and the bougie boats, but because I got to hang out with my team and get closer to people I really care about. I think at the end of the day, the meaning of life can be created by your own experiences, but also the people you meet and the lessons you learn along the way. I used to believe the more you worry and stress, the more you can control a situation. But truth is, more stress just equals more motherfucking stress <laughs> and an unhappy life. You can't control the bad things, but you also can't control the good things. And that's what life is. Okay guys, we're here in Ibiza. You might have this expectation to have the best summer ever and travel the world or maybe start a business in the summer, but if things don't go your way, don't worry. Either we can accept the situation for what it was or find a new meaning for it and remember how grateful we are for anything that happens in our lives. She's doing it. <laughs> Amanda, you made it. Do you want to tell the story time of Sharon? One of the days we saw this guy at the cliffs and he was really cool and he was asking for a number. But then when he asked us to put his number on his phone, we misspelled his own number. And Amanda was saying that like, it's better that we didn't write his number because he could be, what is it? He could be like a sex trafficker. Yeah, he, a human trafficker. He could be a human trafficker. We'll never know. We'll never know. It was for the it was for the best. <laughs>